Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Japan and we're going to return to another brewery who I haven't had anything from in quite a long time. It's been over two and a half years since I've reviewed a beer from this brewery. But they're a very nice brewery, quite quirky in the sense that they use a lot of sake brewing techniques in their beers and stuff like this. So I'm really curious to see how this one turns out. This particular beer is quite different to the other two that I've tried from this brewery before. So for this one then, we are going to go down to Totori Prefecture which is in the southern part of Honshu, the largest of the four main Japanese home islands and we're having a taste of my third beer as I mentioned earlier from Dyson G Beer. This one is the Imperial Stout and it comes in at 9% ABV. So the other beers that I've tried from these guys, the first one I believe was the Wheat Wine which looks very similar to this except it has a red label on it. And obviously the beer's different. And I also tried the Yago as well, which was a really nice beer made using some of the sake rice that they grow themselves. So that was a very, very quirky one, but a really nice beer that I recommend you check out if you get the chance. And like I said, this brewery, are uh, they use a lot of sake techniques and things in their brewing. So that makes them a little bit quirky compared to a lot of the beers that you're going to find in North America or in Europe, of course. So if you get the chance to try some of these beers from Dyson G Beer, I highly recommend that you have a look at them. I've had a good experience with this brewery previously. So definitely cool to return to them and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this one and this is the darkest beer that I've tried from these guys so far. This is yet another beer that I bought from liquor shop Asahiya in Taishibashi and Maichi here in Osaka. Koji and Rika run the shop, two very very nice people, father and daughter. They've got a great selection of Japanese beers, um, a good selection of different American things as well, mainly West Coast American if memory serves me correctly, and they've got some good uh, beers from Europe as well, and also a good selection of like traditional German and Belgian things. So definitely a bit of a treasure trove when it comes to Osaka, so make sure you go and check them out if you find yourself over here. As always, I'll put the link to their Facebook page in the description below. That's pretty much where I buy all of my uh, my Japanese beers that you'll see reviewed here on the channel apart from the ones that I bring back from different prefectures so do go and give them your custom if you get the chance. Koji keeps a lot of beers aside for me which is obviously very very much appreciated but like I said looking forward to returning to this brewery and uh, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer a 9% Imperial Stout. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Dyson G beer before hopefully there can be some more at some point in the fairly near future I don't plan on leaving another two and a half years to review my next beer from them there's all the usual social media down there as well if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefect or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Japanese beers that I've reviewed for you. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show me and the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Dyson G Beer then. So Dyson G Beer is a brand of the Kumizakura Shuzo, the Kumizakura Sake Brewing Company, which can be found in Totori Prefecture, as I told you, in the southern part of Honshu, the largest of the four main home islands of Japan. But this is an old sake brewery that was established back in 1856, so even earlier than the Meiji Restoration, which was 18... 68 if I remember the day, uh, the, the year correctly, maybe 1867 and a lot of breweries started up just after that of course but the beer production began in 1997 just after the laws for uh, beer production were liberalised before that in Japan, you could only brew beer if you had if you were able to brew more than two million liters of beer per year. But the beer production is actually done as a joint venture between Kamizakura and San and Sanzo, who are a producer of high pressure gas. And as I've told you before, many of these little Japanese breweries have some really quirky associations and things like this. And this is definitely one of them. I have to say, the other one uh, was Preston Ales, who were founded in the back of a furniture shop. That's the other one that kind of springs to mind here. Um, but in Totori Prefecture. 
you can find this brewery near Yonago City. There's a mountain called uh, Hoki Fuji, and its name officially is Dyson. But the brewery, this is where the brewery, of course, takes their name from. Dyson G Beer, Dyson Local Beer. Most of the breweries over here are known as G Beer Breweries, local beer breweries. And um, but the head brewer at Dyson G Beer is Hideki Hide Iwata, who graduated from Shimane University, where he studied microbiology. And when he graduated, he heard that Kumazakura were to begin producing beer. And he'd always been interested in sake brewing, but he was even more interested in beer brewing. So he got in touch with the company and managed to get himself a job there, and here we are now. So this area is really rich in natural resources such as water and volcanic soil. The water that's used in the beers from this brewery comes from the Jizotake, which is supposed to be one of the top 100 springs in Japan. And the brewery also produced some of their own products as well. This is the Dyson Gold Barley, which appears in early summer. They've got hops, which... Um, uh, appear in the summer as well. Also some Yamadi, uh, Yamada Nishiki rice which is a very popular kind of rice, is it right to say rice strain or rice breed? I don't know. Um, but it's a very popular type of rice to use in sake brewing. That is produced in the autumn and they also use that in some of their beers as well, mainly the Yago that I reviewed for you before. But apparently the hop production that they have was inspired by Shiga Kogan and also the increasing hop prices. They've got their own variety of hop which is called Vian, which is uh, comes from the German word for dedicate and you might have heard that as well from Weinstefan after the, uh, you know, the Weinstefan monastery where those beers were originally brewed before it became a state-run operation. Um, but this brewery have grown substantially over the last few years um, and he has produced many experimental beers and he often tweaks his other recipes as well to try and make them better year on year. These guys have the Gambarius restaurant which you can find in Hoki near Yonago and as of December 2019 these guys have produced just over 90 different types of beer. So um, yeah, as I say, a really interesting brewery this one. One of a couple of breweries or a good few breweries over here that um, you know are attached to a sake brewery and when you get the ones that are attached to the sake brewery you tend to get really good quality beers but they're quite um, you know they're usually quite oily and interesting in the uh, the malty side of things actually and from what I remember of Dyson G beer that's what I thought of the wheat wine and the the Yago before so I'll be really curious to try something from them that is a little bit different and a little bit darker in the spectrum so um, yeah this is definitely a brewery that you want to check out I hope that I can review their IPA for you at some point in the future. They do have a really nice big oily and fruity IPA that I have tried before but I've never seen a bottle of it again so that's definitely one pardon me that I'll be keeping an eye out to review for you on the channel at some point in the future. I'd love to go down to to, uh, to Tori and Shimani and just have a little look at that southern part of, uh, of Honshu. That's definitely a trip to do in the future. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Dyson G Beer and Kumizakura Shuzo. Hopefully I can review one of their sakes at some point on the channel too. That's definitely something I'll look into. But a very interesting brewery this one and definitely worth checking out if you get the chance. As always, you'll find the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different beers and stuff that they've produced. You can also check out Urban Sake and you'll find all the different sakes produced under the Kume Zakura Shuzo name too. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. So as I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is a 9% Imperial Stout. Apparently it uses three different types of dark malt. It didn't say exactly what they were on the website, but it did say that um, it's three different types of dark malt that they're using in here. But as you can see, this is a beautifully presented beer. All of the beers from Dyson G Beer, incidentally, you'll find them in this kind of style of bottle. And you can see it's got one of these nice little gold foily things on the top here. And as I've told you before, when it comes to Japan, um, you know, there is, I've always found this strange. They're a very environmentally conscious country, apart from when it comes to packaging. There's a whole culture in Japan about uh, gift giving and things like that. So it always has to look very nice. And quite often you'll find these nice gold foils on the top of uh, Daiginjo sakes and things like that. So quite cool to find it on the uh, the top of a beer. So without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting. I'm really curious to see how this particular beer turns out. And there you can see uh, the Kumizakura Brewery bottle cap on this one there and Dyson just on the top of it. Michiko tells me that's a very beautiful part of Japan. So like I say, hopefully 
we can uh, go down there and have a little look at that. If I get to visit the restaurant, I'll definitely film a little out and about review for you. So let's get this beer out and we will get on with the taste in there. I need to keep this bottle cap too. Yeah, nice little bit of smoke on the opening and we'll get the beer out and into the glass. As you can see, still using my lovely Mino beer glass here. This one's going to have quite a big head on it actually, but I'm sure that will die down a little bit. So as you can see, and as you would expect from an Imperial Stout, this one's poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood colour. And if I shine the light through it, this one is pretty much, um, it's pretty much black as night, you know. I've got an LED light just over here and there's nothing really coming through that at all, not even a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola mahogany coloured edge. You could see the head on this one was not far off two fingers, maybe a finger and a half. Um, and I would say it's a kind of medium tan coloured head on this one. Um, not the darkest be uh, sort of tan beige colour that you're going to come across, but fairly substantial within that. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But I mean, overall, there's nothing overly surprising about this beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is. So um, yeah, I'm curious to see whether this one's more like a kind of sweet stout or whether it's more like a Russian Imperial or exactly you know what kind of sub-style of stout it is. Not that that matters of course, the main question really is what uh, you know is whether it's a good beer or not. So um, yeah, let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this one. I'm really curious to see how this turns out. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, straight away with this beer, first impression I'm going to say is that the aroma of this is actually quite mild, to be honest with you. It's one of these ones where it doesn't really jump out of the glass at you. This is more, it, it strikes me as more of a beer where it's all about the different subtleties and things that you get out of it. So you've got some nice, you can definitely pick up a nice little bit of that roasty black malt in there. It's almost got this kind of dusty, chocolate feel to it. You can definitely pick up a little bit of that kind of well-fired toasty bread crust kind of thing. Maybe there's a little bit of um, Weirman Carafa in this beer. Very, very kind of popular malt from uh, from the Weirman Malt Company in Bamberg in Franconia in Germany. But there, there's something about this beer that there is, I, I suspect, there is a little bit of that in here. But the other thing that you notice the more that you smell this beer is that there's there's a lot of nice kind of brown sugar to this one, um, and it's quite, uh, uh, on one side of the coin, it's really nice and toasty, but at the same time, it still retains a lot of sweetness, so you will notice that. Um, you've got this kind of dusty chocolate in there, and that chocolate, it has an element of the dark chocolate side of things to it as well, like the sort of higher cocos, the sort of... 70-80% cocos, but at the same time there is a degree of milkiness to it. So like I say, this is one of these beers where the aroma is really about all of the subtleties and the more I smell of it too, the more I think it's a little bit bready. Um, not just bread crusty, but a little bit kind of brown bready. Um, so yeah, some nice uh, toasty brown sugary notes. I, I kind of went off track there, but yeah, the brown sugars in this it's got that degree of sweetness to it, but it also comes across in some ways as being very kind of well-fired. Um, so that's, the, the aroma out of this beer is really nice. Definitely some woody undertones in here as well. No doubt in my mind about that. Definitely a little bit woody. And there is something that tells me there might have been a little bit of rice used in the malt base here. There's just something about the sweetness in this beer that comes across as a little bit sort of sake like um, so that's interesting. I'm sure in their IPA they actually use a little bit of sake. I wouldn't be surprised if they were doing it in the um, in the wheat wine as well. I remember the wheat wine being a big kind of oily and very smooth example of a wheat wine. Not that I've tried too many right enough. Um, you will see one appear in a few videos time too. But um, yeah, this it's, it's a really nice smelling beer, this one. It's all about the malts in this beer, I would say. But... Um, yeah, it's a really smooth smelling beer. You need to take a bit of time with this one and just enjoy the subtleties that this beer has. That's what this one is uh, is all about. Some really nice woody undertones to this that come out a little bit 
later on. Um, in terms of the um, the kind of in terms of the hoppy side of things, it's got a little bit of earthiness to it. There's a teeny little bit of a kind of floral character, and you've also got some grassiness too. Um, on the fruity side of things, there's not too much to report there. I mean, it's quite um, it's quite sort of there's a little bit of a figgy note, maybe some kind of candied red fruit in there as well. Maybe a bit of black currant or blackberry or something. It's quite hard to pick out what hops they would have used in this beer. I mean, you know, they could have used Northern Brewer from Germany which is popular in Doppelbox, that'll give you some red fruits. They could have used Bramling's Cross from England, which might be a bit more common since it's an imperial stout. You've also got Williamette in America that can give you some of these nice red fruity characters as well. It's difficult to pick out exactly what it would be, but a little bit of a kind of figgy note, some um, blackcurrant and blackberry type things in there as well, um, but, you know, quite a mild fruity aroma for me. This one is all about the kind of smoothness of the malts, but I suspect with this beer, the, the, the aroma for this one doesn't really jump out of the glass at me. I think this is one that's going to shine a little bit more in the uh, in the flavour side of things, because I, I think I remember saying the same about the uh, the Yago and also the wheat wine. Um, these beers, I think, as I say, the, the, my impression that I always remember this brewery were not so big in the aroma but you know very lovely and very smooth in the flavour so let's see if that holds true so this one is the Imperial Stout coming in at 9% ABV from Dyson G Beer part of Kumazakura Shuzo, Kumazakura Sake Brewery in Totori Prefecture in the southern part of Honshu here in Japan good to return to this brewery after about two and a half years Slanja, Skull, Kampai Yeah, that's a really nice beer. First impression, when you take this one in, it comes in actually very, you know, really, really quite sweet and very, very rich. And it just smooths out in a really, really interesting way. It does come across as a very oily Imperial Stout, this one. I'm, I'm pretty certain there's some rice used in the malt base here. Um, and, you know, some people might be put off by that, um, you know, some kind of craft beer, um, sort of, how would you say, purists, if you like. Um, but it really works very, very well. And I think that's one of the, the I always enjoy. I love Nihon Shu. I've done quite a few reviews of that now on the channel. And, uh, you know, I love the smoothness that you get out of, out of rice wine, out of sake. And it's, to have that in beer too, I think it's really interesting. A number of Swedish breweries, like such as um, Dugas Brewery in Gothenburg, they used a little bit of rice in some of their IPAs and things and it adds a really it just gives you this lovely oily character in the centre of your palate and you know I, when I tried those beers from Dugas Brewery that really you know it, they really reminded me of these Dyson G beers so there's a, it's interesting to see that that's something that seems to have spread a little bit from Japan over into uh, to Europe and things like that but this is a beautifully smooth Imperial Stout it comes in very sweet initially and then it just smooths out and becomes big and oily. So yeah, you can feel um, this has got a lovely smoothness to the malt base. You, there, there, I'm certain that there's some of that there, some of the ricey character in this beer. That's just blanketing the middle of your tongue, and then on top of that, you get the sort of toasty black malts, but it comes across as a little bit more bread crusty. It's not dry. It's, I think the the the, the rice that's in here, that I'm, I can't say for certain, but I'm sure there's some rice in here. It really just smoothens everything out and it gives you a very rich flavour. The aftertaste in this beer really is very, very nice actually. The black malt that is sort of forming the back like the, the, the backbone of this beer mixed in with the rice just it, it's it's so smooth and, and, and really nice. If you get the chance to try this stout, like I said, it's very, very quirky. I can't think of anything to compare this one to, to be honest with you. But it works very, very well in my opinion. A lovely smooth Imperial Stout. At 9% as well, this isn't the heaviest Imperial Stout you're going to come across. But I think it's really well executed actually. And if I blind tasted this, I might think that it's a little bit heavier in alcohol than it than it actually is because it's done that well in my opinion.
So yeah, as I said with this one, lovely smooth ricey base to it. Some roasty black malts kind of going in there. You can feel the, the sort of edge of your tongue a little bit. Just before you reach the edge of the tongue, you can feel a little bit of the black malt just drying out on the side of your palate too. Some sweet... Um, some nice kind of sweet brown sugary notes in the very centre of your palate. If you go to that very centre of your tongue, you'll get quite a, a sweet and oily, um, slightly treacly type flavour there. It's a little bit toasty, and you've got that kind of sweet... That It kind of gives you an almost slightly biscuity impression of this beer as well, but that's really sitting in the centre of the palate. There's maybe a few kind of chocolatey tones to this one. It's kind of a dusty, powdery type chocolate and it's it's somewhere in the middle. I mean you're talking like 60% cocoa or something. There's, there's a few milky elements there but also a few kind of darker cocoa elements to this one as well. And um, you know when I was talking about the aroma of this beer as well I thought there was maybe some carafe malt in here with the smoothness that this beer has from the from what I suspect is rice it's quite difficult to tell exactly what the the dark malts in this beer are. Um, you know, I'm really not sure whether it would be carafe or anything. Um, but what I can tell you is that it's a, it's a lovely take on the Imperial Stout. That's definitely a very quirky one that is difficult to compare to other things, that's for sure. So yeah, brown sugars in the middle of your palate, gradually becoming more biscuity. A little bit of chocolate kind of sitting underneath that. And as you go further out towards the edge of the tongue, a little bit of the kind of toasty black malt, but you can feel that lovely ricey smoothness just forming the backbone, the linchpin of this, this stout. Um, yeah, I love the malt base in this one. Try this beer for yourself and just and see how you get on. I think this is a, a really, really nice one. Um, if you go to the centre of your palate and move forward a little bit, you might get a few kind of nutty flavours out of the beer. Um, sort of nutty undertones and they mix a lot quite well with the woody notes. Like I say, if you go to the front corners of your palate and move in a little bit, you'll get a few kind of woody undertones to this beer. But on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate you've got a nice little touch of earthiness there. Um, and it's not too dark in earthiness. I mean, the earthiness that's in this beer makes me think it's either German or American hops that's in this one. It's not dark enough to be English hops. So maybe Northern Brewer, maybe a little bit of Will You Met, who knows. Um, but as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue, you can feel that earthiness just smoothening out a little bit. As you reach the very front part of your palate, you'll get some nice floral aromatic notes. It's not too big, it's just quite uh, quite light. And then round the very front curve of your palate, it's a little bit lighter and grassy. And behind the front curve of the tongue, you've got a nice kind of oily um, bubble there where the juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And for me, when you take this one in, um, it's got a little bit of a kind of black curranty, blackberry sort of thing. It's got a little bit of sharpness to it almost, but not tart or anything, just a little bit of sharpness to it, which is black curranty, blackberry-ish. But then the further you go into the aftertaste, it becomes a little bit more sort of figgy. Um, yeah, I think I would stick with that. It's quite a figgy. Um, fruit flavour that you get out of this one, but then as you move further on to the kind of tip of the tongue, it's quite, um, it's a little bit sort of more black currenty and blackberry-ish, um, and it's it's almost the blackberries that just kind of linger there the further that you go into the aftertaste, and some of the woodiness and um, roastiness starts to push its way out of the beer as well. Some of the earthiness lingers there. It does get a little bit darker the further that you go into the aftertaste, but you do have those kind of smoother vibes coming out of the, the beer as well. Um, but like I say, this is a lovely smooth imperial stout. I think you'd struggle um, to beat the smoothness of this one. I'd struggle to find um, an, I, uh, an imperial stout that's this low in alcohol, but is this level of, is this level of smooth, if you like. So that's the real kind of quirk about this beer. I like this one, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to to drink it again. For me, that's the trait of this brewery: is that nice, big, oily smoothness that their beers have, um, and that's something that ticks a big box for me. As I always say, beer is subjective. Different people like diff like different things. I love you know my beer to be a little bit oily, um, but yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel, then. Um, for me, 
it's quite a full bodied beer, it's at the bottom end of full bodied right enough but carbonation in this one is very very smooth the overall mouthfeel as I've repeated a few times is oily and um, in terms of the, the bitterness of this beer I think we're talking maybe this one isn't too high in IBUs to be honest with you when it comes to the stouts this one actually leans towards the, the sweeter end of the spectrum um, but it does have a good degree of dryness to it so it's probably at the drier end of the sweet end of the spectrum if that at all makes sense um, but yeah the malt base like I say you've got a lovely kind of racy smoothness to this one you've got some sweet elements to it as well and it dries out a little bit the further you go into the aftertaste too but mainly it's smooth and quite sweet for me um, the hoppy bitterness I think we've got to say maybe about 50 IBUs and I think that that could even be being a little bit generous but I want to say about 50 IBUs with this beer um, you know it's not going to blow the head off you in terms of its bitterness a nice little bit of an oily fruity character there the, the sort of oily part in the malt base as well really helps bring out some of the nice fruity notes in this beer but I would say um, that on the tip of the tongue a little bit more kind of juicy black currants and uh, and stuff like that but then it's kind of figgy behind that part of the that front part of the palate too but a lovely lovely imperial stout this one i certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again and i feel a little bit disappointed that i haven't been able to find these beers in such a long time but like i said very cool to return to this brewery after an extended period of time hopefully i don't have to wait this long again so um yeah let's just leave it at that for this one this one is the imperial stout coming in at nine percent abv from dyson g beer in totary prefecture in the southern part of honshu the biggest of the four home uh, the four main japanese home islands here in japan an awesome beer and i'm glad that i got to return to this brewery so um yeah let's leave it at that once again thank you for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from kumizakura shuzo and dyson g beer hopefully i can review one of the kumizakura shuzo sakis at some point would definitely be cool to do that and i hope that uh, you guys have enjoyed this review will definitely return to this brewery at some point in the future. Thank you again for watching. Make sure you check out my social media, but most importantly, take, check out Dyson G Beer and uh, the Kumazakura Shuzo if you enjoy a nice Nihon shoe like me. Until the next time, Slanju just now, and I'll catch you guys later. Slanju, school, cheers, a lovely Imperial Stout at 9% ABV. Cheers.